Welcome to HealthCast, the heartbeat of health IT. I'm your host, Sarah Seibert. Over the past year, the Departments of Defense and Veterans Affairs and the U.S. Coast Guard have been collaborating on their journey to a single common electronic health record for the nation's service members and veterans. Implementing an EHR is complex for any organization. It involves a multidisciplinary approach to prepare the new system, ensure privacy and security compliance, design practice workflows, train care teams, and manage the adoption process. But the benefits are numerous for both patients and clinicians, ultimately improving care altogether. Leading this effort is the Joint Program Office, the Federal Electronic Health Record Modernization, which reports to the Deputy Secretaries of both Defense and VA to enable this journey. Today, we're joined by its director, Bill Tinston, to recap efforts in 2021 and how the agencies will leverage lessons learned to build upon the momentum in the new year. So first, a look into last year's successes. Well, it's uh, if you look at the electronic health record, the common federal health record across DOD, VA, and the Coast Guard at this point, the, the successes are actually pretty astounding, right? Uh, we have changed from two individual programs and then the Coast Guard joining to a unified program delivering an electronic health record and uh, capability across this huge segment of the, the national health system, the VA and the DOD and the Coast Guard combined. And, and the shift has been a recognition that it's one thing and that driving towards convergence and doing things together. And I like to say sometimes that the firm is about the things that we do together, not the things that we both do. So r- the recognition of the fact that we're doing this together, that we need converged workflows, that we need a common operating model and that uh, convergence and operationalization of this is the key. The other critical, critical, critical thing that I think we've seen success with is a recognition that, uh, and this changed, I mean, it depends on the maturity of the organization, right? But it started on the DOD, you're seeing it at VA happening at the same time. This the shift from the traditional, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a, a well-worn expression, but the 2,000 mile screwdriver, right? The folks from Washington or the program folks from Washington trying to deliver something and tell you how to run your business to a a truly team approach where it's the headquarters folks, it's the the program folks, but it's right down to the commander and the clinician at the treatment facility that are really driving success. And if you talk to the, on the DOD side, it's, you hear him talk about team genesis, right? And that So that's just the DOD side, but we've reimagined it as a team common record approach. So DOD, VA, Coast Guard, from the program and the headquarters perspective, right down to the the commanders or the directors at the facilities and the clinicians on the floor, all pulling the same direction, trying to create success. And that's that's just a tremendous change. And it is creating the success that we all wanna see in support of patients and beneficiaries across the three health systems. While the three agencies have seen notable progress over the past year, these successes did not come without their share of obstacles. COVID-19 posed unprecedented challenges to the healthcare environment, with agencies and organizations having to rapidly scale operations and delivery to meet new demands. Recent surges in COVID-19 cases amid new variants have also led to delayed implementation of the new EHR at the Department of Veterans Affairs' next rollout site. Tinson will explain how DOD, VA, and the Coast Guard balance the pandemic response and EHR implementation to not only overcome challenges, but also create new opportunities. Well, so obviously the biggest challenge to the unified program and each individual effort has been COVID. Right, so... DOD was just coming out of its first real successful deployment at Travis and heading towards new deployments two years ago in March. And the clinicians that we were supposed to be training at DOD all of a sudden had a far more important mission, right? Responding to the pandemic, responding to a national emergency, delivering healthcare, their primary job. They didn't have time to learn a new system, be trained a new system, and update their processes and procedures and so forth to to, to engage in the new system. So that was the biggest challenge. It also brought in some, some opportunities and it's hard to describe the pandemic as creating opportunities, 
But in this electronic health record space, it allowed us to really eliminate some of our preconceived notions about what priorities were, what was important, and what we should be doing next. And it forced us to look at this from a more joint perspective. And, and probably my favorite example is immediately uh, there was a need, and we all understand why, to consider virtual healthcare delivery, virtual encounters. So DOD, that was it was on the it was on the roadmap, but it wasn't something that we intended to deliver on the DoD side immediately. Alternatively, the VA is a is a renowned leader in virtual healthcare delivery. So what did we do? What did the DoD do? They turned immediately to the VA and said, "Okay, what are you guys doing there? This is now one of our top priorities. How do we integrate this into what we're doing with this new common record? And frankly." How do we integrate this into our existing processes with the legacy systems? And they were able to do that on the DOD side by taking advantage of what the work that VA had already done. And that was all enabled by the work that we do together at the firm and with the two departments in, in delivering a common record. I don't think that could have been done. And I know that the recognition of the importance of that wouldn't have happened without the COVID challenge. So while the biggest overcome is the pandemic. It has also driven us, forced us, sort of a gauntlet to drive better outcomes as we go through this. As we know, interoperability serves as a cornerstone of EHR implementation, but Tinston explains that it's not just about making the data interoperable. To successfully support EHR, the healthcare systems themselves must be interoperable. If done correctly, this could lead to improved decision-making and efficiency, and the firm has already noticed better outcomes. But if you look at it, if you look at it from the common record perspective, uh, the unified record that, that we're delivering, it, we're really going beyond data interoperability, because that's usually what people think about when they think about interoperability. Can you share data? And between the DOD and the VA, we can share data, and we have always been able to share data in some respect, but we have been integrated from a data perspective and interoperable from a data perspective for a number of years. But now we have the opportunity to look at this from a process interoperability, right? How do the organizations work together? So it's not just how do we deliver data to the, to the clinicians when they need it, but how do we how do we make sure that, that, that the, the two health systems can work together? And, and so the, the virtual healthcare is an example of that, right? Uh, we support one another. I think it's primarily VA, VA supports DOD intensive care operations at some locations. So the, the two healthcare systems are supporting each other. We support each other from a technology perspective, obviously, as we share this implementation. And then we also have looked from an interoperability perspective, it's been very critical that we get the community health system interoperability right. Because, you know, it's always been important, but in this virtual environment, how do we get the information about a patient and their care that was delivered external to the, the federal system in front of that clinician, the relevant information in their workflow as they're conducting an encounter so that they can make the best decisions. And we have driven through the Joint Health Information Exchange the firm is delivering for the two departments, we have driven from, and I actually know these numbers, and I think I'll get it right. I think DOD started at about 14% interoperable with the, from a data perspective with the, the, the private sector health system, and VA started about 30%. As we've created this joint health information exchange, and as we brought together and presented as a single federal enterprise to the existing exchanges out there, we have driven uh, the data interoperability with the community health system from that 14 and 30 percent up over 70 percent this time at this point, and we expect to be well over 90 percent very soon. We got a couple of agreements, data use agreements that we're still working on, but we expect that that interoperability is going to be nearly universal with any healthcare providers that are using electronic systems. Right? Clearly, if it's a small practice someplace, uh, still working on paper. Uh, we're not getting the data, but if they're if they're engaged in electronic health records and and they're they're connected to these exchanges, we are nearly universally connected from a DoD, VA, and Coast Guard perspective. And and frankly, I've got a we got a really interesting story. So that the Coast Guard is the 
first uh, organization that has completed their deployment. They've they've done all of their uh, ashore locations and and clinics. I think it's about 109 they did. And we were on we were on one of our calls, uh, status calls, a couple weeks ago, and and uh, an admiral from the Coast Guard was talking about how exciting it was that they could now see vaccination records from patients, uh, Coast Guard members. When they came to a clinic, whether it was done at the VA, whether it was done at the DOD, or whether it was done at a community healthcare site, they didn't have to rely on the member to bring uh, proof of vaccination anymore. They could get it right from the system. And that was entirely new. And she was very excited that that was a capability that, that they now have. And so that's just an example where the interoperability is really driving better outcomes. And what we focus on as we go forward is to make sure that we get the relevant data, right? Because there is a data overload perspective. If you present too much data and not all of it's relevant, then nobody looks. And that we present it in the course of the workflow. So it's not something else a clinician has to do. It is ready and there and relevant when they're in the encounter with their patient. And so we continue to look at things like the fire standards. We have shifted several different domains, data domains over to the fire standards. So we get the relevant data that the, that the, the clinician needs about the patient presented uh, when they need it so they can make the best decisions. Across EHR programs, there tends to be two focus groups, people and technology. Tinston will go on to explain how the firm is integrating change management to ensure the workforce can easily use these new health systems. One of the big changes and transformations in the space is approaching this as a unified team across the departments and from top to bottom, right? So the, the people running the health system, delivering health care, are part of the team, designing, building, providing feedback to, and implementing the system. And that is key. Because the mistake that we make from an IT enterprise, IT acquisition perspective, is we think it's about the IT. And when you do something like this, this common record, you know, bringing a record to two behemoth health systems and bringing common practices, what you're really doing, you're deploying IT. You're creating a system. You are building things and getting it out there. You're doing training. You're doing all of that. But what you're really doing is you're transforming the business and operations of these massive systems. So it is really all about the people. And you need to teach people. You need to discuss with people why you're doing it, why it's a good thing, how you're changing their jobs, why you're changing their jobs, and what, and then take the time to make sure they can do the redefined job as you go forward. And that's, I, I know that that was one of the key lessons learned at the, at, at the initial DOD deployment sites. And it's something that you learn with maturity and enterprise systems, right? So if you haven't been in an enterprise system environment, it's hard to really conceive of how to do this and what this means and what it really takes to be successful in the enterprise system environment. So you think that, well, okay, but we always did it this way at our location. We want to do it this way. And, and people don't recognize that, okay, there's some compromise, but there's also a lot of benefit. I, I have listened to Major General Appenzeller, who was the functional champion on the DOD side. I've heard him publicly talk about how they, they deliver safer healthcare because of the standardization and, and the common processes and practices that we deliver. So you really get a benefit from the common system, but it's hard to recognize that if you've not worked in a common enterprise IT environment in the past. So that focus, that focus on the people and the process, and that it's really a business transformation or a healthcare delivery transformation that you're executing. And then under it is this IT tool that you're molding and shaping and transforming to meet the new business healthcare delivery model that you're creating. And that is the key part, is putting the transformation of the, of the healthcare delivery in front and in focus, and then making sure the IT supports it in the background. I recall dealing with some of the testers who were trying to determine whether you know, the, the new record was operationally suitable. And this is, a con this is not a specific example. It was just an, it was a, it was a conversation we were having about, hey, we're interviewing people and we're asking them 
if their job is easier now and they're saying no, therefore you didn't deliver a good system. But what gets missed sometimes is that that person they were interviewing, let's just guess that they were, you know, somebody who was, who was uh, bringing new patients in. Their job was taking twice as long. But what they were doing by spending twice as much time in the induction process is they were alleviating uh, workload on clinicians in a different part of the process. And that teaching that, that's the why. Why is my job changing? Why is it important? And why is it important to patient care and effective delivery of patient care that I'm taking the work off the physician or the clinicians so they can spend time with patients because I'm capturing the information up front. That's just the kind of example and the kind of thing that gets missed when you look at it just job by job and not as an integrated process. Moving into 2022, Tinston explains how the firm will look to allocate and manage resources to ensure continuous growth of the program, taking a unified approach to implementation. If you look at the upcoming year, I think that the VA has 11 deployments scheduled. DOD has nine waves scheduled, and those are multiple sites. So that's a lot of demand on the resources in the industry, frankly. Are there enough trainers available? Are there enough experts around to support all of the demand that we're placing on industry to, to, and, and government to deliver this? So that's where we focus. And, and then the next thing we look at is, okay, how, how do we effectively allocate, and allocate's the wrong word, how do we effectively find solutions that allow us to use the same resources? How do we work this jointly? How do we look at things like joint solution owners so that we can bring the resources, the DOD, VA, and the, and the industry community together and make sure that we're meeting the, the, the patient needs and healthcare system needs without overtaxing capacity, people capacity and talent capacity. So that's where we really look is how we bring it all together make sure that, that we're not just taking a stovepipe look and there's enough resources available for everybody as we go forward. In December 2021, VA announced that it will be implementing new changes to its EHRM program, including updates to its timeline and reorganization of its oversight and leadership structure. As part of the shift, John Wyndham, former executive director of VA's Office of EHR Modernization, joined the firm. Tinston will discuss how these shifts will leverage lessons learned to drive transformational change that focus on outcomes. Well, so I think they can only do good things. I'm thrilled to death to have Mr. Wyndham on the firm team. His experience at DOD and VA is unparalleled. And so as he joins the firm team, I think that strengthens us in this space where we're doing, executing the things that we do together. From a VA perspective, the shifts over there I think recognize or indicate a recognition of how important it is to get an enterprise approach and, and the building maturity of an enterprise outlook for delivering an enterprise system, right? So what, what they've done is they brought over Dr. Durham uh, working for the deputy secretary and they've tied together and created a stable platform by tying together they're OIT. They've got a deputy for OIT that, that is on the team. And then they've got the program. And that was always a, a senior position reporting to the deputy. And then they have the functional champion. So they're bringing, they're bringing the VHA together with the, uh, the, the IT organization, with the delivery organization, tying it all together. And if you think of your three-legged stool, right, it's now stable. And that's the platform that they're using to drive this out. And they've got Dr. Durham running that organization. And I think it can do nothing but good things. It's tying the right people together so that you get the right outcomes as they begin, begin deploying again. And so I, I think back to when I was on the DOD side as the, the program executive officer, and I would sit next to the functional champion and, and sincerely mean this. And I think they're creating the same situation there. I would say, I can't do this without the right doctor sitting right next to me telling me what the system needs to do and if I've effectively delivered something, a system that does that. And, uh, and, and I think the VA has positioned themselves 
to get the right infrastructure uh, in place, to get the right healthcare the requirements in place, and to get the right delivery organization in place. So I think it's fantastic what they've done, and I expect to see building success as they proceed through 2022. With these new management structures and priorities in place for 2022, Tinston said that his focus will be on leveraging past experiences to drive better outcomes in the new year, removing IT barriers and supporting people processes, especially as the VA looks to resume its rollout schedule at its next site in Columbus later this year. So I'm looking at, from a firm perspective, um, what can we do to make it so it's obvious to those not part of the process that we're delivering a single unified system. And to that end, we are very focused on what we can do at the North Chicago James A. Lovell Federal Healthcare Center, right? That is a, that is the most integrated DOD VA facility already. And it's run by a, a director from the VA. And, and it's, it's been, oh, it's been more than 10 years that they're already integrated. And so we're looking at how we deliver the single record there without disrupting their processes and actually improving the integration in their processes. So that is giving us the opportunity to harmonize and integrate from a process, create interoperability from a process perspective between the two departments. And then what does that do for us? Well, that gives us opportunities as we make it work for the Federal Healthcare Center up there. It gives us opportunities to roll that into the, the common implementation and enable the people that run the health systems to make whatever decisions they deem are appropriate, right? Make the best decision independent of IT. So, so they can decide at any location, hey, wouldn't, we, wouldn't it be beneficial to everyone and the systems? And wouldn't we save money or be more efficient or whatever the decision is based on if we could do this, if we could share this service, if, if you could order this from us? And as we drive through the Federal Healthcare Center uh, in North Chicago, we are making that possible for them. They don't have to come and say, hey, can we do this from an IT perspective? Because we're trying to create through this a system that supports that across the board, taking IT out of the decision space for how the healthcare systems work together. And that is super, super, super exciting to me. And that's, that's what I think is IT professionals and enterprise IT delivery folks and operators that, I think that's what we have to look for all the time. And that has to be our North Star of success, right? Delivering IT you don't have to think about, creating the underpinnings that allow people to make the best healthcare delivery and business decisions they can. And so that's what I'm focused on. That's what the firm is focused on, is using our experience at the Federal Healthcare Center to drive that kind of outcome. And I I know that the way I described it is a little bit aspirational, but if you don't have aspirational goals, you're not gonna. You're not gonna achieve uh, the things you're trying to accomplish. You're not gonna meet your own aspirations or get close to them. That's all with Healthcast for now. If you enjoyed the show, please follow us on your favorite podcast app or listen to more at govciomedia.com. Until next time. HealthCast, along with GovCast and CyberCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to govciomedia.com. Watch out for new episodes released every Tuesday and Wednesday across our shows. You can follow all of them in your favorite podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at gcio.com.